Let's continue looking at the fundamental theorem of algebra, which again is finding our zeros of the polynomial. Yes. Let's look at, look at the same example we did yesterday. So 2x squared minus... Did I have anything wrong yet? Oh, I'll start it early. All right. So, let's look at the same polynomial I started with yesterday. 2x squared minus 2x minus 4. And we're going to use the grandpa method to find our zeros. First off, do I have zeros with this polynomial? Yes. How many zeros do I have? Uh, two. I got two right here, my largest exponent. Now let me find all of my potential zeros. So I'm going to look at the coefficients 2 and 4 and start off by finding my multiples of 2, which is 1 times 2. So plus and minus 1 and plus and minus 2. Now let me find my multiples of 4 which is 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. So my multiples of 4 is plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4. Now I'm going to take all of these values here with my constant, my multiples, and divide them by all of my multiples of the leading coefficient. So to better organize this, I want to put plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, and plus or minus 4 all over plus and minus 1 and plus and minus 2. So that I can easily see how I should simplify this. So let me start looking at 1 and divide that by 1 and 2. So 1 divided by 1 is plus and minus 1. 1 divided by 2 is plus and minus 1 half. That takes care of 1. Now let me divide 2 by 1 and 2. So 2 divided by 1 is plus and minus 2. And 2 divided by 2 is 1, which I already have, so no point in rewriting that twice. Lastly, 4 divided by 1 is plus and minus 4, and 4 divided by 2 is 2, which I already have. So here's all of my possible zeros with this polynomial. Keyword there is possible. All right, now that we have our eight possibilities that I need to find two of, how your grandpa had to find what those actual zeros are is to take each one of these and divide them into this polynomial. Once you divide it and get a remainder of zero, that tells you then yes, you are a zero. Otherwise, if you get any other number, it's not a zero. You have to throw it away. So let's use synthetic division because that's the much easier method. I prefer long division. What? Really? No. Yes, I actually do prefer long division. Why? I don't know. I well, I'm going to use synthetic division because it's quicker. Oh so let me take my coefficients here. 2, negative 2, and negative 4. And I'm going to start off with plus 1. So I'm going to see if 1 is a 0. We're going to do that all the numbers? Yep. One by one until you get the 2 we need. So 2 gets dropped down. 2 times 1 is 2. Add. That's 0. 1 times 0 is 0, that is negative 4. So I get a remainder of negative 4, which means, is 1 an x-intercept for this polynomial? Uh, is this a 0 yes. with a remainder? Like I said, it is not a 0 because we are looking for a remainder of 0. That means oh. that, that 0 goes in evenly into here. Since it doesn't, since I have a remainder, it is not one of my zeros. No. Which means i got to pick another number now. Oh my God. So since I've already used positive 1, let me try negative 1. Put my leading coefficients in oh. and divide. <laughs> so 2 gets dropped down. 2 times negative 1 yeah, is negative right. 2. Add these together. Oh. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. <laughs> And negative 4 times negative 1 is a plus 4, which adds to 0. zero. So I ask, is negative 1 a 0 of this polynomial? Yes. It is. So if your remainder is a 0, that means that your divisor here is a 0. Negative 1 is one of my zeros. So I'll go ahead and write that down as my answer. So actual 0. I needed two. I just found that one of them is negative one, so I need one more. Now you have two options. We are down to six more options here. I can either plug these in one by one, 
and see if I get a remainder of zero. Probably. Or a smarter method is to use a shortcut, which notice how I had this quadratic, and it simplifies to this linear function here. So I'm focusing on my quotient, and I want to rewrite that quotient into what it tells me. So negative four is my constant, and this will be my x value. So I get 2x minus 4. Can you find the zero of a 2x minus 4? Should be pretty easy. Yeah. All I need to do is set that equal to zero and solve for x, right? Yeah. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's see. Let me move 4 over. Minus 4. 2x equals negative 4. Let me now divide by 2. Aha, uh -huh, yes. I see I get x equals oh, positive four. Yeah, that should be a positive four. Aha, uh -huh, I'm glad I've tested. So that makes this not a negative two, but a what? That should be a positive two. Aha. Uh -huh. Because if I would have had worked this out, then I'll go ahead and finish it off. I'll get a negative six, and I get a positive twelve. And I get an 8. Wait a minute. Negative 2 is not a 0. What? I got a remainder. So let me go ahead and start over. This time with positive 2. I'm glad I checked my work there. Because I would have stuck with giving y'all the wrong answer. So now let's try positive 2. So 2 comes down. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 minus 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is positive 4, and 4 minus 4 is 0. Wow. Yep, that worked. So 2 is verified synthetically. That is as well a 0. So here are both of my zeros I was expecting to have here. Now, what do we do with this information? What would your grandpa do? Well, he would take these zeros and now use them on a graph as x-intercepts. Yeah, this is how he would start off the graph by graphing these as x-intercepts. And then he would look at end behavior and then turning points and then other things we'll see later to help him draw the graph. Now, luckily, we don't have to use Grandpa's method because we can work backwards. We have the technology to find what? Okay. To give us x to give us uh, give us the answer, zeros. Calculator, right? So if I were to take this polynomial and what I'm calling the modern method and graph that polynomial and look at the x-intercepts, what are my zeros? Negative 1. Negative 1 two. and 2. So our modern, modern method is to graph, look at your x-intercepts, And then you'll get your answer of negative 1 and 2. That's a lot less writing than Grandpa, right? We're actually working backwards. Where he had to find the zeros and then call these zeros x-intercepts, we had the technology to find the x-intercepts and then call those zeros. Thankfully. So yes, I'm saying you don't have to use Grandpa's method. I highly recommend you don't. We have the technology to graph. So use that method. I want to bring up one more thing. There is a huge difference. Make sure you pay attention to the terminology. Possible zeros is not the same as actual zeros or real zeros. Actual real zeros means graphing. Look at your x-intercepts. Possible zeros means use the rational zero theorem, like so.